What's up Helix users, HX Stompers, and all of you out there looking or interested in what this video is gonna be about. Today we are talking about how I'm going back to basics for my touring rig. For the last couple of years since the pandemic, you know, we haven't been touring as extensively as we were in 2019. And that's kind of led me down this path of exploration um, between creating content for um, other products and just exploring what else is out there. If you have been on the channel long enough, you know that I've been an avid Helix user since 2017, and it totally changed my life. But since then, I've been really exploring the Fractal FM9, the Quad Cortex, the new Headrush Prime, um, all the new Blackstar units, so many different direct solutions. Um, really just in pursuit for content, but potentially if something jumped out at me and was able to take over the gigantic soft spot in my heart that I have for the Line 6 stuff, then I would be open to doing it. I was literally about to be fully decided on taking the Fractal FM9 with me on the tour. For those that don't know, um, I play for Jessica Lynn, who's also my wife, and we are leaving for a two-month tour across Europe at the end of May. So I was fully set on taking the FM9 because we are 100% independent, so we don't have any tour bus or trailers when we're overseas. We basically are doing the old van and space is of the utmost importance so i was thinking the fm9 has a little bit smaller of a footprint and it could accommodate the two guitars that i always did with my helix and it's significantly smaller and then after a few rehearsals with it i was like let's just try the hx stomp xl and see what happens so running the hx xl for me on the regular hx stomp for jessica because i control all her electric guitar switches and sounds as well and it'll be a lot smaller i can put these as a satellite modular setup and put this in my gig bag and not have to worry about a separate bag for it, which is, I mean, that's like a game changer when you're trying to worry about space on the road. And I honestly think that it sounds every bit as good as the FM9 when you really know what you're doing with it. There's no difference in sounds. And actually, so far, the band has preferred this new XL setup that I've been doing. And another huge factor in my decision to do that was if I have the FM9 in Europe on tour, I don't have any connection to Fractal whatsoever, so if, God forbid, something happened and, you know, stuff happens. Uh, stump, something could fall on it. It could fall off the stage. Someone could spill something on it. And if the FM9 goes down, I don't have an alternate. I can't go to a store and just buy an FM9. There's the wait list and everything is direct um, sales. And especially in Europe, I really don't know what to do. Um, because I've done so much work with the Helix stuff, I do have contacts there where if, God forbid, something happened to my Helix or my stump, I could make a phone call and have one replaced um, swiftly and immediately. Or I can just go to any big box guitar store and pick up a Line 6 product off the rack and make do with what I need if that were to happen. And that's a really a major thing at the level that we tour at where we're independent and we are completely self-sufficient and do everything ourselves. So it's definitely something that went into this decision. And um, obviously things are still subject to change though. I might change my mind next week. I don't know. But for right now, I'm really liking this rig. Um, what I have here is the matchstick, which I'm using kind of to copy my real um, Samson era matchless back here. I really love the way that this thing sounds and I wanted to recreate it in my HX stump. So in the preset, and I'm going to put this for sale up on my website if you guys want to check it out. Basically, I'll put it up for price of a cup of coffee. So trade me a coffee for a preset if you want to check this out. So I've got all eight blocks taken up here. And in, first in the chain, I've got a Tima, which is going to be like my natural crunchy overdrive. Then I've got my Diana drive, my favorite actual distortion pedal in the HX world. I've got a tremolo for the couple of songs that require a tremolo. I've got a always on slapback. I'm using the Adriatic delay for this. Um, I've never really used this in a preset before, but I decided to keep a full time slapback on and I'm really liking the way that sounds. Uh, Mod Chorus Echo, my favorite delay pedal. I've got the 63 Spring Reverb out of the Legacy section. And then I've got the Matchstick Channel 2 into a cabinet that I kind of made, like the way that these cabinets are, um, it's a 25 watt greenback and a vintage 30 um, kind of separated. So. In the cabinet block, I have a 412 greenback 25 and a 412 blackback 30, which is going to simulate what this is doing. If I was going stereo, I could manipulate this a little bit and make it sound a little bit bigger. But because we do mono, it's going to be mono. As far as my view goes, um, 
I'm only using one preset and this is kind of the whole purpose of this is that I wanted to go back to basics as if I were taking a real pedal board. Like that's kind of where using all the units just kind of overwhelmed me in the past two years where I'm like, there's so much that I could do, but do I want to do it? You know, it's like you have all this unlimited power, but um, choosing to dial it back is kind of a really important thing to me at this point where I'm focusing more on playing better parts and playing better guitar than I am uh, making all different weird sounds and making everything the most perfect sound. So I'm going to use this as if it was a real pedal board. I've got six pedals and my amp, and that's it. Not changing presets. I'm going to use one preset the entire time as if it were my pedal board. So what I've got here, I'm using Command Center, of course, because that's the greatest part of the Helix stuff, being able to put anything anywhere. And you see here, I've got my tremolo up top, I've got my team, I've got one snapshot, and this bottom right, foot switch B, is a overall parameter and bypass. It's kind of like a faux snapshot, but it's not gonna be, it's a little bit different flexibility-wise because that's just gonna be my solo boost sound. So instead of having a solo boost for clean, solo boost for dirty, solo boost for heavier distortion, it's one foot switch of solo things. So it's gonna bump up the gain on the amp, give me a little bit more reverb, and that's about it. But it's just gonna give me a little bit more. So whatever sound I have on at the time, I can hit that and it's gonna just give me a solo boost so I could do it in everything. If I was using snapshots, it wouldn't be like that. So here we go. This is, well, let's make sure I'm in tune first, huh? Shall we? That's why I love, that's why I love this guitar. This is my uh, iconic guitar, it's my main touring guitar. Love this thing. Never goes out of tune, never never fails me. So it's definitely my go-to road guitar and why I'm using it here. I've got it dialed in pretty dark because it's a bright tally and normally I would keep the, the uh, tone knob dialed back about halfway. But with this, I dialed it in pretty dark so I don't really need that. So here's bridge pickup. <laughs> And then I'll go single coil neck, single coil bridge. This is a coil splittable here, and it's a five-way switch. And then the other sound that I typically use is the single coil neck pickup. So the full humbucker single coil split, and uh, that gives me a nice, uh, almost, I guess it's like a telly neck pickup. the neck humbucker for more um, rock solos that have a little bit more distortion on it. Alright, so let's hit some of these pedals, see what they do. Well, let's go with the Tima. This is kind of like my natural, slightly crunchy sound. You can hear the slap back slightly. It's like it's there, but not. It just adds a little bit of a something to it, so I like the slap back for that application. This gives me that really like kind of country breakup sound. Then the next drive is my Diana drive, so that's my favorite actual distortion pedal in the HX world, and this is going to be kind of my heavier sound. me just naturally switch to the humbucker when I have the more dirty sound on here. And then I have my tremolo sound, so that's going to be something I typically use with the little bit of a crunch. I might dial the volume back based on the situation, and this is kind of the go-to tremolo that I have synced to the tap tempo, which is another huge plus of this, having the tap tempo and the tuner um, right there versus the regular stomp. <laughs> And 
And this is nothing special on this. I just love this. This is the regular basic tremolo sound, mono tremolo pedal. I guess it's the Boss tremolo. That's uh, the model here. And there's really only two songs I use that on. And let's see, I have my Mod Chorus Echo in the top right here. That's something that I use all the time um, in both, in all of my Helix products. This is my favorite solo delay. Yeah, about three to four repeats. I darken them a lot so that they're out of the way. And if I were to kick the Diana Drive on, go full neck humbucker, we get something like that. Now I'm gonna hit my solo button. I wish I could customize this and rename this. I wonder if I can. Um, I thought I was trying to and I think I couldn't, but uh, this is now my solo boost with the two, with the distortion and with the delay pedal on. So now this is the edge of breakup sound with the solo boost added and the delay. Also works great for clean sounds. This is a clean solo boost with a delay on. This is a song that we always play. Um, it was featured in a video game. It's a pretty cool song. Here it is without. It gives you a nice little kick up. Perfect little solo boost there. And now the most interesting part of this, it's a pretty boring and basic preset. As I said, back to, pre back to basics is the goal here. I do have one snapshot built into here. That's gonna be, it's gonna change that mod chorus echo into a dotted eighth note and the slapback stays on. So this puts the Tima on and puts a dotted eighth note on the mod chorus echo. <laughs> So that's that dotted eighth dancing delay that's gonna come in handy um, for a couple of songs. And now when I hit that same foot switch, it will return me to snapshot one, which is my bass preset. Uh, again, it's just the two snapshots, nothing crazy, and I'm back to my bass. Set. And that literally does it for the whole preset. Like I said, back to pre, back to ba like I said, back to basics is the goal here. As if I just had a few pedals and had to do a whole tour with it, that is what I'm sticking with, and well, that's what I'm currently sticking with, and I'm really enjoying using. It's encouraging me to play more, play more interesting parts, and instead of relying on all the gadgets to do the work for me, I got bass, core, amp tones, a couple drive pedals, just a just a solid setup that keeps it basic and forces me into a more creative space. So let me know what you guys think about this new mentality and what you think about the preset. It'll be up for my it'll be up for sale on my website, stevestrelachi.com. Trade me a cup of coffee for the preset. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.